Greetings all. Greetings from New Ham Manchester, New Hampshire in the United States where I'm on the East Coast on a rainy, cold spring day. So there's no day like time like the present to go ahead and get started on uh, flattening my learning curve of joining blocks together. Um, I've decided that the um, zipper join is going to be the join that I um, put together my uh, wacky weave mystery cow blanket um, <laughs> intermingled with the intermingled blocks that have been that we've been releasing within this group. Um, I thought I'd share a video with you and I thought I'd start some uh, flattening the learning curve series so to speak if this one goes well. Um, it started off a little rough in that I did the whole uh, whole spiel and forgot to hit record. So while this is my first time joining, it's actually uh, my second time because I ripped out what I did here and um, I'm ready to start it over again to share with you. Uh, I hope you're all well. I hope everyone in your family is well. And I hope that, you know, this group has been giving you a place to escape the stay at home by venturing out into the world and, and, and you know, um, just, enjoying and sharing with you know other interminglers across the globe um, it's really a, a fabulous thing uh, to be able to do to do this and i'm so blessed and, and you know i can't tell you how much it touches my heart to be able to um, share with you all this you know love of our crafting and and just you know, escaping, like I said, the home, the, the, the stay at home and, and getting out there and actually feeling like you, you're, you're talking to, to friends. So without further ado, I'll get going. Oh, well, I will say though that, um, like I was saying to one of our members a few minutes ago, for posterity's sake, I did comb my hair and I got dressed. Um, you're not going to see me, but I did do that for you today uh, to, to do this video to give me a sense of normalcy and uh, <laughs> if such thing exists. Um, so again, we're going to be doing the joining of the squares, the modular blocks uh, with a zipper join. Uh, if you look, I'm going to show you this. This is the Celtic Love block that I recently released um, and can be found in the Etsy shop. But um, this is not an ad, but anyway, the uh, this block can be found there. But if you look at the block, all of these uh, wacky weave as well as the intermingled modular blocks that have been uh, released for the mystery cow and to coordinate with the mystery, the wacky weave mystery cow are 20 by 20 squares and they all have the same border uh, instructions included in them. Uh, the border becomes important for these because um, I don't have one here that doesn't have a border on it, but when you create these squares you have, though they can stand alone without a border, if you want to join them, they, they do uh, need one to come together neatly and evenly. Um, the border gives you a nice even chain around the entire block that'll match up to you know to each other um, when you when you uh, so when you go to uh, join them together I've never done like I said other than what I just did a few minutes ago and didn't record uh, the the zipper join uh, I have looked at a few videos online on how to do it it's pretty straightforward it's uh, it's not rocket science whatsoever uh, but it does provide a nice join for the blocks that doesn't add too much bulk um, so that's kind of the nature of these blocks. They need to have this border to get a nice uh, edge to work with. We're going to be joining the, the non-public side leg of the border joins to the non-public side leg of the other border um, to get that nice flat even, even join. Um, when you go, when I find that when uh, one tries to join the blocks together, and that can be whether you're quilting or you know they're knitted pieces or or whatever it is that you're trying to join together, we tend to do this, right? We move things around. So um, in order to just not be messing with that too much, um, what I'm going to do is 
for the when I'm joining two blocks together, I'm going to use these lovely little um, clips, magic clips or whatever they're called, to to lock the piece together and to keep it stable so that I can um, go ahead and, and zip up zip up the zip up the uh, center there. So I get these on Amazon. I love them. My daughter Julianne, also a member in this group, um, introduced me to them when she uh, took up quilting, uh, and they were an amazing. They're an amazing deal. Uh, they were like ten dollars for ten of a hundred of them, and uh, I just use them for so many things. Whether it's clipping my pattern to my a board into my to, to a stand or um, you know, just sewing. I use them in sewing. I use them to for things like this, and I just uh, I use. <laughs> funny thing, I, I discovered these worked well as as a Portuguese uh, knitting pin, so to speak. I put just clip them on my clothing, and I can I can do uh, Peruvian Portuguese uh, knitting. Uh, it, with those on, clipped onto me instead of um, having to put a pin through my clothing um, or by you know other other you know pins although I, I am a notion freak I love them but so the way these blocks are created uh, they they are going to match up very nicely as you can see all the way up the block they have the corners I'm going to start in the and each corner has three um, three three half double crochets in it. So I'm going to begin the join at the first on this side, the first of the three here. The center one won't get joined yet. Um, in fact, it may not join in, until I close them up together. I'm not sure how that's going to go yet because like I said, this is a learning curve and we're flattening it together. Um, but then the outer, the, the the third one out here will get um, worked either as part of the out, whole outside border, or when I go when we go up here and we're doing them across this way. Um, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get started. I'm going to just clip these together. I'm going to push this up so it actually so I can see those legs of the outer chain nice and neatly. This here is Stylecraft Special Erin weight yarn. I love it for this purpose. I love it for the child's blanket. Um, highly washable. This is it's lofty. It just has a nice feel to it. Um, it I'm not. I, I typically am not a huge fan of, of using acrylics, but for the purpose of these blankets, where they they are so co they can be cost prohibit prohibitive because they use so much yarn. Um, the style craft is very very uh, reasonably priced. Um, I don't have any <laughs> affiliation to them, but uh, I get it through Lovecrafts, and uh, it's just my fa It's my go-to, and I absolutely adore the teal and, and uh, cream for these, you know, uh, on the whole. Uh, not that I won't work in something else. Um, so yeah, I'll just add one more to start here and then I'll line this up. Let's see. So I've got my my change, you can see them right here. Um, I'm actually watching this as you're watching it on my PC over there, and hopefully you have a good view of it. Um, so I'm gonna, again, I'm going to start down here in that back leg and that back leg of the the crochet chain that is presenting on the whole outside of every block because of our border that we added on. Um, my understanding of the the zipper join is that you simply start with a slip knot, put that on your hook. I'm using the same size hook I use for my blanket. Um, my blanket is, like I said, an Aran weight yarn, so it's a heavy worsted Aran, and I'm using I used an H hook, and the drape is wonderful on this with this yarn and with this hook. So I'm going to use the same color that I use for my main color in, in, in Chat Noir here. And I know he's not Noir, he's Bear. 
but um, <laughs> I didn't think one shot there it sounded correct. <laughs> so, so we're going with Unshot Noir, and you know, there'll be an Unshot Noir at Halloween, I'm sure, uh, with some coordinating blocks to go with him. So that is one of my designs. He's, he's actually also available in the Etsy shop. We had him as a free block for a while, so there are some samples of him in the files if you want to see him. Um, he has he has been tested and he's available online. Um, and, and like I said, in the in all the all I knit is is uh, all I knit is love Etsy shop. All right, so let's get started. Um, back loops, uh, the non-public side leg of those crochet hooks. The first one in the corner is where I'm going to start. I've got my uh, slip stitch my um yeah slip slip stitch on there and i'm going to just hook those two back bring it through and i'm actually going to bring that right through to that slip stitch slip knot that i started the 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 uh, block with and just kind of pull it up um you go right through this is a slip stitch all the way up it is not a single crochet a single crochet i mean you could do but it will add bulk to the center of your your block um, what's going to happen as we go up as you can see you've got the four legs right two for each of the blocks one two right so we've got four four legs one two three four we're joining those center two um, that is going to leave a straight line up the up, up the outer edge of each side uh, from each of the blocks and then it's going to place a single crochet um, kind of a running chain all the way up it looks very uh, neat and clean it doesn't add too much bulk um, try to work it you know don't try to, don't pull them too tightly um, just kind of keep a keep a relaxed gauge not not loose but relax just you know relax relax and enjoy the journey i guess <laughs> so i'm going to dig in and i'm going to get the uh, non-public side loop there of that of my right side chain and i'm going to go ahead up into the um, i'm actually going from the top down into that and i'm coming under the other one and coming up from the back to grab the other back leg and I'm just going to loop that around and I'm going to pull it through the two loops and I'm going to pull it through for the slip stitch. Okay, I'm going to do a few of these and then I'll show you how we're looking. Um, let me find my next loop. Here it is. So I dig down and in, then I'm coming up from the bottom up to the top of the other. So I'm not doing a lot of twisting, right? So just pull it up pull it through for your slip knot. This is clearly not rocket science, um, but it finishing the finishing touches, I feel on the finishing touches on every project really are what can make or break the project from looking homemade to handcrafted. Um, nothing wrong with homemade. I usually, you know, I mean, they are both, both are the same, but it's it's a it's a perception, right? So anyway, let's go through the two back loops there. Let's pull up that loop and we'll pull it through. Again, we've got another little crochet loop there. I'm just making sure it's nice and neat, and you can see it starting to form there. Maybe I don't know if this is close enough, but you can see it starting to form. And I'll bring this closer to the camera in a moment. Um, my camera is not really very portable uh, where it's at right this second, but let me keep going. As I'm doing this, I just want to say again, thank you all so much for for joining me and for for uh, your interest in, in the intermingled uh, crochet blocks for you know everything that you share and everything you do to promote the love of 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 this craft. Um, I'm relatively new to crochet, though I've crocheted, you know, learned many years ago how to crochet. It hasn't been my fiber craft of, of choice, you know, like first choice over, over the years because I, I, I really am 
you know, I love, I just absolutely love knitting. And, you know, I, I didn't think of myself as a crocheter, not that that would be anything wrong with being a crocheter, but I just didn't think of myself as a crocheter. I was a knitter. However, I discovered this, this interlocking method through Tannis Gallic, and, and uh, then I, uh, you know, came across, I, I think it was through the crochet cab, and I was introduced to Lisa Conley's uh, designs and worked on some of her designs, like her Native American Afghan was tremendous. That was my first <laughs> interlocking, locking fully crochet, you know, whichever name, you know, the particular designer has given to their method. Um, that was my first experience with it. But I, I love and I loved it. So it's like for the last two years, I've done far more in the way of crochet than I have knitting. Um, so now I guess I just have to run with, you know, I'm I'm a fiber artist because <laughs> because not only do I I like, love to to knit and crochet, I, I'm now trying my hand at spinning, and you know, it's just you know, it's endless, but. Uh, so maybe this quarantine's good because it's giving us some time to to develop those those crafts that we really that really fill fill our time and our fill our hearts and you know uh, what's the what's the old expression you know uh, idle hands <laughs> idle hands make the devil's workshop you know sorry if <laughs> no offense meant, intended but you know funny thing is that's that is a saying um, so here we go we we can see here that this doesn't bulk up too much right and it looks pretty good let me let me draw this up so you can see it does have a little slight ridge but it really I can tell you that it, it it's it's relatively flat I think once I, I wash and, and just lay this out block it out it'll it'll be really uh, flat and this is what the backside does so it looks pretty good it's pretty solid as far as the join goes and i'm loving it so i'll continue on up this this line and i can see it's actually going faster than i thought it might and it's not hard it's it's not hard at all There we go. I just want to make sure that I'm kind of adjusting each chain as I go to make sure that it's the tension looks good with the rest of it. Um, so as this goes and I get towards the top, I'll get the next two ready. Um, because, like I said, I'm doing that one joint. I'm I'm joining the the columns of 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 my blanket. So I'm doing the first right hand column, then the second column, then the third column, and I mean then the second column. Um, I was thinking that I would probably uh, just join do two. two do two sets of the columns. Do one and two together, three and four together, and then join the, those two together all the way up. But again, learning curve, I'll think about that and I'll um, let you know what I end up deciding. But uh, ultimately that's how I'm going to join them all is with this with this uh, zipper join. Um, hopefully this has been informative. Like I said, uh, my next move is going to be to take these two, the next two in the columns here, yeah, this little piggy, he's available. This little piggy did the right thing. This little piggy stayed home. So this little piggy is going to remain free in the files until he's fully tested and vetted and um, goes to market, um, at which time he will be available in the Etsy shop. But for the moment, he is still free in the files. So if you haven't done so, go ahead and and grab grab a hold of that file and give it give it a whirl and you know post your pictures in, in the album for for this old guy he's going to go here so i'm going to keep going up going up the blocks here these will remain loose for the moment i'll probably clip them so they're not flopping all over the place but um 
then I will um, come back and you know, let you know what I'm doing with the how to get the two the two column the rest of it together, so to speak. Um, again, thank you so much. Thank you for being in the group. I really hope you're enjoying your time in 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 the interminglers group, and I just um, can't wait to see where this all brings us all. Uh, hopefully, we'll all come down out of come out of lockdown soon. But you know. I also hope that our camaraderie continues to grow over the years to come. Um, take care, be at peace, and be well.